Hello everyone and welcome to Programming in Access 2013, the advanced course. My name is Steve Bishop and in this video we're going to be talking about managing your subform interactions with VBA. So in our last video we actually had a, uh, an error pop up here that was a runtime error 3075. We could see that there's a syntax error in the code that uh, is the actual SQL query that's being put on the active order subform. So let's go ahead and hit on the debug button here. And you'll see that it drops to where we're applying the SQL query to the record source. So let's go ahead and actually look at the SQL query itself by just doing the question mark SQL, and that'll return back the value that's currently in the SQL variable. So let's go ahead and copy this, and I'm just going to throw this up here uh, on, a, on a notepad here so we can see it just a little bit better. And we're actually going to diagnose what's wrong with this query. So um, let's break this down a little bit. I'm going to take this uh, and look at our select statement. Just drop this down here. Okay, there's our from statement. Let's separate that out by a couple lines. There's our on statement. Let's drop that down. There's our where clause and our order by. Okay, so when we look at this, we can actually see, okay, my select uh, section here looks pretty good. I don't see anything wrong there. My from looks pretty good. My where clause, though, I can see that the orders equals is missing any sort of value here. So the SQL variable doesn't look like it's getting any value in here and this query doesn't make any logical sense because there's no value to compare for the employee id now that's obviously because we have taken out any value of the employee id and we haven't really said that there's some sort of default value if somebody selects no employee so we need to fix this we need to make sure that this sql query here has some sort of way of if there's no value for this combo box, let's go ahead and return a value of some sorts, some sort of default value that at least causes the error to go away and produce the results we want. Now, there's one of two ways you can do this. You can either have it return all of the results of this, uh, of everything here, or you can just basically make it return no results. I'm going to go with the no results, okay? I want to make sure that the only way that somebody can see any data within the sub form is if they select a proper employee. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to use the null to zero function, and I'm just going to say if there is no employee selected, then the default value is just going to be zero because no employee is going to have the employee ID of zero. And we can go ahead and double check that if we just go into the uh, employees table and just pop this sucker open, we can see there's no employee zero in here, okay? So I'm just gonna use that as my default. So NZ is gonna change this employee combo box to a zero if no employee was selected. So let's go ahead and save that, compile it, and let's hop out of the employees. Okay, there we go. Let's go and go into the design view so we can have another crack at this form. Okay, so we've got no active orders currently. We've got the, you know, the hashtag name. If I select an employee, let's say Jan. Okay, I've got no active orders for Jan. If I delete the employee, which is what I did the last video, and after doing that and hitting enter, we got the error message. And lo and behold, we don't have it this this time. So really this was a logical error. And I just went through a process of determining what the problem is when there is a logical problem. Now there's one other thing that's on here that you guys probably want to know how to fix. And that is of course, when you go in and you first open the form and there's no employees selected, how can we make it so that this active orders subform doesn't show these hashtag names, we just maybe you want it to also show up blank. Well, the way you can do that is, well, there's several different ways. You could, in fact, if you wanted to, make it so that the form itself doesn't even show up uh, if there's no employee selected. So we could say, uh, you know, when the form loads here, we could say um, disable the form, right? Um, and actually, 
that's not the route that I'm going to go. I'm going to actually take the query that fills in the active orders, and I'm just going to do essentially the same thing that, um, you know, when you select zero employees, I'm just going to essentially take that same query and apply it when the form is first opened up. So I'm going to go up here to the active orders form. I'm going to go to the on load event, which happens, it's triggered when this main active orders form is loaded. I'm just going to hit the ellipsis here and go to the code builder. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy everything that's in here. And I'm just going to go ahead and paste it right into this form load. And I'm going to just keep it that way. I don't think that there's any reason to change this. Uh, I could certainly, you know, set this to just zero if I wanted to. I could take out this combo box altogether and just put in a zero if I wanted. That would accomplish essentially the same thing. But I just wanted to show you how easy it is to just solve these problems sometimes. And perhaps maybe somebody presets the value of this combo box before the form loads. You know, maybe somebody passes in a variable, uh, you know, passes on a, a value in say like the temp vars or something and sets the value of that combo box before the form loads uh, or as the form is loading. And so this would still be a valuable thing to do here to check the value of the combo box before doing the requery. So let's go ahead and save that, compile it, and once one more time, let's go ahead and view it. We've got no employee. Notice that there's no hashtag name, and it won't work until I actually select somebody. And let's just select somebody that has something. There we go. Andrew has a couple of orders. Now, if I delete the employee out of here, hit enter, we can see that the active orders goes back to blank. So there you go. There is a functioning, fully functioning um, uh, filtering of the subform that is working off of the two different events that happen. One when the form, when this active form orders loads up, and the other one is triggered when the combo box is has some sort of selection. So uh, if you guys have any questions about this, please feel free to drop me a line in the comments section. I'll be happy to answer any questions about this video. Uh, if you don't mind, could you please like, favorite, and subscribe to my videos so that uh, I can know who you are and, and kind of keep track of how many people are, are enjoying these videos. So thank you so much, and uh, I hope you guys enjoy the next video.